Welcome to Wichita Liberty TV with Bob Weeks. Hello, I'm Bob Weeks for Wichita Liberty TV, your weekly source for news, analysis, and commentary about Wichita and Kansas government and public policy. We're broadcast on KGPT Channel 26.1, also its companion website, kgpt26.com. Some of you may know me for my blog, The Voice for Liberty, at wichitaliberty.org, where the motto is Individual Liberty, Limited Government, and Free Markets in Wichita and Kansas. So I cover things that may not be covered by other news media in the area, or if we do cover the same news, I'll do it from the perspective of economic freedom, limited government, and individual liberty, as these are the things that are so important and are so often under attack by our governments, be it at the federal, state, and local level. So, please visit wichitaliberty.org. You can subscribe to the email newsletter I send two or three times a week. If you'd like to contact me, you'll find my email address there, or just remember, bob.weeks at gmail.com. People often ask me, Bob, how are you so smart? How do you learn all these things? Well, first of all, I say, I'm really not very smart, not at all. And the more I learn, the more I realize that there is so much I will never know or understand. But I do have a lot of information. And here's some of the things I do to gather information. First, I can't overemphasize how important it is to have good personal habits regarding your computer and applications. And there are two important areas in which I see many people struggle and having problems. One is the storage of documents on your computer. Many people simply don't take the time to organize and rename files as they're added to their computers. For example, most digital cameras name the photos just as numbers, which of course are not descriptive of the photo's content. So as you transfer photos to your computer, I think it's important to, first of all, create folders to hold your photos, and then rename them to something descriptive. And when downloading any sort of file, say a Wichita City Council agenda packet, think about where this file is being saved on your computer. Is it going to an appropriately named folder? I have a folder on my computer named Wichita City Council Agendas and Minutes. And each time I download and save an agenda report or minutes from council meetings, I make sure that it's saved in that folder. And also, remember that you can rename files as they're saved. So, be organized, and the easiest time to organize things is as they're created or downloaded. A second area of problem I see many people struggle and become frustrated with is accounts and passwords. How many times have you forgotten a password? And how many times have you used the same password for many different accounts? It's important to be safe by using strong passwords and by using different passwords for each account that you have, email, Facebook, Twitter, bank, credit card, etc. So, how do you keep track of all these passwords? And how do you make it easy to log on to all these different sites with all these different passwords? Well, one way is with pen and paper, and that's certainly feasible. But a second way, and what I do, is to use a password manager. And there are several that are available. I happen to use a service called Dashlane. And it's frustrating at times. Sometimes it gets confused and doesn't operate properly. But overall, it has made a big difference for me. I let Dashlane generate strong passwords, you know, ones with lots of random letters and numbers. And it's a different password for each account. Then, logging on to the many websites I use is automatic, or nearly so, using Dashlane. So using a password manager helps keep you safe. And using something like this, along with a little bit of organization as you save and create files, greatly reduces frustration as you use your computer and the Internet. Well then, and this is really important, I urge you to implement a backup strategy or service. And most people probably have two or more things to back up. One would be your smartphone or tablet. Now think about how many photos you may have on your smartphone and on it alone and nowhere else. And for Apple devices, the iTunes program will make a copy of your phone and all of its content to your computer. I'm sure that Android and Windows phones have similar capabilities, but you have to do it. 
And the second device to protect with a backup is your computer, be it desktop, notebook, or whatever. Now, many people use an external disk drive for this purpose, but I urge you to use an internet-based backup service. These services store your documents somewhere remotely, in the cloud, you probably heard it said. Since uploading files through the internet is sort of slow, an initial backup can take a long time, often several hours or even several days. But after that first backup, these services watch your computer for new or changed documents and update the backup continuously. This happens in the background and you probably won't even be aware of it happening. Now there are a number of such services available. I use one called Mosey. It has a free version with a small amount of storage available that might be all that you need for your uh, documents. Otherwise there are plans with more storage starting at about six dollars per month. Now using these services will give you tremendous peace of mind. I have a friend who somehow lost all of the photos that he had stored on his computer. But he had installed Mosey at my recommendation and was able to recover all the lost information. But you have to do this now. You have to do the backups before you experience a loss because, of course, after a loss it's too late. So protect yourself now. Well, another skill that people may find helpful is to learn to save web pages on your computer for future reference. Maybe you want to save something you saw on Facebook, for example. And one way to do this is to save a web page as a PDF file. Now, if you use Google Chrome as your web browser, and I recommend that you do, it has this capability built in. Otherwise, I recommend a free app called Primo PDF. Or something else I use for a similar purpose is called Clean Print from a company named Format Dynamics. It's also very useful if you want to print a web page as you can get rid of the unnecessary things you don't want to print. Just search for clean print on the internet and I'm sure you'll find it right away. And another useful service that operates as an add-in to your web browser is called Fireshot. It allows you to save just a region of a web page. Now, you may be wondering, why does Bob use so many different programs to do pretty much the same thing? And the answer is, not each of these techniques works on all websites, so you have to be a little bit flexible. But in any case, you'll be creating a PDF or graphic image file on your computer, so it's important to do what? Well, two things. Make sure the file is stored in a folder where it makes sense, like the Wichita City Council Agendas and Minutes example I spoke of earlier. And second, make sure the file has a descriptive name that makes sense to you. So, learning just a few skills and following a certain discipline will make your computer safer and much less frustrating. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Wicks. So in the last segment, I spoke about some good practices for managing your computer and information and also presented generic techniques for saving information that you find. So now, where do you find information, especially about government and public policy? Well, one place is the newspaper. Now I know that some say that newspapers are losing their popularity and influence, perhaps especially most so amongst young people. But in most areas, the hometown newspaper is by far the most widely accessed news source. For example, a widely cited source for web traffic information says that Kansas.com, that's the online site for the Wichita Eagle, had about 285,000 unique visitors in April. The big three Wichita Television Network affiliate stations' websites had 206,000, 169,000, and 90,000 unique visitors each. And it's important to note that the news that newspapers report is often very different from television stations. TV stations usually don't have an opinion page and letters to the editor, for example, and television news stories are usually brief. And I'm also aware that many conservatives may not read the Wichita Eagle because of the liberal or progressive slant of the editorial page. Interestingly, 
progressives, liberals, complain that the editorial page is too conservative. And often people complain that this bias, whichever way it tilts, if it does, that bias spills over onto the news pages. But it really doesn't matter if you agree with the editorial stance of the opinion page. And while we'd like to believe that the news is factually correct and that the editorial opinions are based on sound judgment, well, that's not always the case. And even if the news is wrong and the editorials and letters are flaky, well, it's what people are reading. It's what they're being fed. So I think that if you want to understand what people are thinking, or at least how they're being influenced, you need to read the newspaper. Now, for the Rich Taw Eagle, I would recommend the digital subscription. After an introductory period, it's $10 a month. But there is a way you can read most of the Wichita Eagle for free. And besides that, it's a very useful and valuable resource. This is an online service called NewsBank. Now, you can access this over the Internet through the Wichita Public Library website. All you need is a library card. And NewsBank, at least as the Wichita Library makes it available, carries the Wichita Eagle back to 1984. And by the way, the same library card gives you access to many other online services like EBSCOhost. I'm almost tempted to say that these services are free, but we know that government is not free. It's very costly. There are, of course, other newspapers in Kansas. At the state level, the Kansas City Star, Topeka Capital Journal, and Lawrence Journal World are all important newspapers. Now, another good source of knowledge is a think tank. These are organizations that some people call universities without students. And there are, of course, think tanks all across the political spectrum of ideas. And I don't like to play favorites, but if I had to choose a few favorites, one of mine is the Cato Institute. And over the past few years, Cato has expanded both its physical facility in Washington and also its stable of scholars and researchers. And you may, may remember David Bowes, the executive vice president Cato, who was here in the Wichita Liberty TV studios last October. Well, the Heritage Foundation has also been growing the past few years. There's also the American Enterprise Institute, whose president Arthur Brooks was the subject of a video we saw a few months ago. And we've also made use of much material from the Ludwig von Mises Institute. Henry Hazlitt, the author of Economics in One Lesson, the book that we examined last year with the help of Amanda Billyrock's videos, well, he's a favorite author at the Mises Institute. Then, from the West Coast, there is the Independent Institute. Its president, David Thoreau, was in the Wichita Liberty TV studios last year. And there are many others, such as the Foundation for Economic Education and the Mercatus Center at George Mason University. All of these think tanks will give you excellent information about policy. The focus of these think tanks that I've mentioned is primarily national in scope. And at the local level, we have the Kansas Policy Institute. This think tank, based in Wichita with an office also in Overland Park, is the leading voice for limited government in Kansas. It aims its attention primarily at the state level, but also at local level policies too. Then, Americans for Prosperity is not so much a think tank as an organization that promotes activism. It's a great organization, and Kansas was one of the very first states to have an AFP chapter. Now, I'm sure that some of you will notice that these organizations are all conservative or libertarian, and you're right. And there are organizations like this that promote liberal or progressive ideas and action. And if you want those, well, I'm afraid you'll have to find them on your own, but they're not hard at all to find. Now, other ways to learn things. Well, I think it really pays off to invest a little time to learn how to effectively use an Internet search engine. And in my opinion, nothing is better than Google. And a very valuable feature of Google is Google Alerts. Now, these are like pre-programmed searches for topics that you follow. So you might, like I have, created an alert for the phrase Wichita City Council. And then after creating alerts, whenever web page or pages are created that match the alert phrase, you'll be notified by email or other method. 
And another very valuable feature from Google is called a site-specific search, which allows you to focus your results just from one particular website. Now, Google Alerts are very useful when web pages appear which contain search terms that you've programmed your interest for. But what if you're interested in a web page and would like to be notified when it changes for any reason? Well, here's a secret that few people know and use, but I'm telling you. It's called changedetection.com. Now, you give it the address of a web page, and when that page changes, you'll be notified. And not only can you be notified, but the changedetection.com service will show you what's been changed, added, and deleted. This is an invaluable service, especially for keeping track of web pages that change only infrequently. And kind of similar, but also a great value, is the Internet Wayback Archive machine. It's on the internet at archive.org. Now, this is a service that takes snapshots of web pages, in some cases going back to about 1996. And to use this service, you give it the address of a web page, and it will show you the snapshots it has stored. And this can be very valuable. We've talked before on Wichita Liberty TV about the new website the city of Wichita introduced in March 2013. And I think I showed you how much information it is missing compared to the old website. So, what if you want something that was on the old site, but was not brought over to the new site? Well, the Internet Wayback, Wayback Archive machine may be able to help. It's not guaranteed that it will have what you're looking for. But using it, I was able to find City of Wichita budgets back to 1961. The oldest budget that the new website, the new improved website, the city says, has was for 2004. Oh, and so what did I do when I found these budgets in the Wayback Machine? Well, I saved them, naturally, to my local computer. And I never thought I'd have to do that. But I never figured that the city would implement a new website that has less information available than the old. But it did just that, and the city tells us its progress. Well, there are many more valuable services on the Internet that I use to keep informed, but I hope that this introduction will help you become a better informed citizen. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks. When a prominent Wichita business executive and civic leader asked for tax relief, his reasoning allows us to more fully understand the city's economic development efforts and nature of the people City Hall trusts to lead these endeavors. Here's what happened. In November 2013, the Wichita City Council granted an exemption from paying property and sales taxes to High Touch Technologies, a company located in downtown Wichita. Now, the application is of more than the usual interest as the company's chief executive officer, Wayne Chambers, is now chair of the Wichita Metro Chamber of Commerce. And the Wichita Chamber, along with its subsidiary, the Greater Wichita Economic Development Coalition, these are the main agencies in charge of economic development for the Wichita area. And under Wayne Chambers' leadership, these organizations are recommending that the City Council authorize a vote on raising the Wichita sales tax, partly for the purposes of economic development. So let's take a look at some of the aspects of this company's application and the city's agenda packet material. I'm going to quote some of the phrases and arguments contained in its application letter. For example, High Touch used the phrase, to demonstrate our commitment to Wichita. Well, this is ironic because High Touch is asking to be excused from paying the same property and sales taxes that most other people in business firms have to pay. I think that instead of commitment, this demonstrates hostility to the taxpayers of Wichita because they will have to pay more taxes so that this company can pay less. 
But even that irony is surpassed by the, is the spectacle, or chutzpah, I would say, of the incoming chair of a city's chamber of commerce threatening to move his company out of the city unless the company receives incentives. Well, Wayne Chambers, the CEO of the company, he also wrote that the incentives would be helpful in offsetting the substantial capital requirements. Well, I mean, who wouldn't appreciate help in offsetting the cost of anything? I think we can categorize this as unpersuasive. Well, the letter High Touch wrote to the Wichita City Council also mentioned the corporate stewardship programs, which refers to charitable contributions that the company makes. And underlying this argument is that because High Touch makes charitable contributions, it should be excused from the same tax burden that most of us face. But I've got a better argument. Be a good corporate citizen by paying your fair share of taxes. Don't ask for others to make up your share. That will let citizens make their own charitable contributions instead of subsidizing what Wayne Chambers and High Touch want to do. Well, the letter to the Wichita City Council also said that High Touch will answer questions regarding this project or any of our business activities. Now, this refers to how the members of the Wichita City Council will be asked to make a judgment that this business is worthy of subsidy and that other businesses are not. And the notion that the city of Wichita can decide which companies are worthy of tax exemptions and investment is an illustration of what the economist Frederick Hayek called a conceit. And it's so dangerous that his book on the topic is titled The Fatal Conceit. And the failure of government planning throughout the world has demonstrated that it is through markets and their coordination of dispersed knowledge that we best learn where to direct capital investment. It is simply impossible for this city government to effectively decide in which companies Wichita should invest their tax dollars. Nonetheless, the city council made the decision, and as we know, the council wants a larger role in budget for this type of activity. Well, the letter also mentions something called a payment in lieu of taxes or pilot. So, High Touch is not proposing to totally escape its tax burden, only partially so through the pilot. But the proposed pilot payment is quite generous to the company. A few quick and perhaps imprecise calculations shows how small the pilot is compared to what taxes would normally be. Now, city documents indicate that the uh, proceeds of the industrial revenue bonds for high touch will be used to pay for $2 million worth of improvements. This amount of commercial property would pay about $60,000 a year in taxes. And high touch, through the pilot program, is proposing to pay $33,000, just a little more than half of what the taxes might be. But the true value of the taxes being avoided is probably much higher. As an example, nearby office space is listed for sale at $28 per square foot, and that's really a distress level price. Applying that price to this building, its value would be almost $3 million. And if we look at market capitalization rates, which are generally given as from 9 to 11 percent for Class A space, we arrive at a much higher value. Well, various calculations could be used, but the value of this property could be almost $12 million, and taxes on that would be about $300,000 per year. Now, these are back-of-the-envelope calculations that may not be accurate, but it gives us an idea of what's actually happening in this transaction. High Touch is asking to avoid paying a lot of taxes year after year. But by offering to pay a small fraction as a pilot, the company appears magnanimous. Now, High Touch, in its letter to the council, also asks that the pilot payments be capped at that rate for a period of 10 years. So High Touch proposed that what it's paying in lieu of taxes should not be subject to increases. Everyone else's property taxes, of course, are subject to increases due to either assessed value increases or mill rate increases or the combination of the two. But High Touch requests an exemption from these forces that almost everyone else has to deal with. 
And High Touch also told the Wichita City Council that the tax exemption would lower the cost of office space. Well, again, who would not enjoy lower business or personal expenses? But the cost of this incentive spreads the cost of government across a smaller tax base than it would otherwise be, and that raises the cost of government for almost everyone else. Now, High Touch also told the Wichita City Council that the incentive would cause employees to be added to the Wichita office instead of other offices across the United States. Well, this is common. The threat of relocation or expansion elsewhere is routinely used to leverage benefits from frightened local governments. But these threats cannot be taken at face value. There is no way to know their validity. And how valid is a threat from the incoming chair of a city's chamber of commerce to pack up and move his company to another city? Well, this company also told the city council that it would use the tax savings for expansion. And I think that implicit in this argument is that Wichita taxes prevent companies from expanding. True or not, this is a problem. If taxes are too high, we're missing out on economic growth. If taxes are not too high, but some companies seek exemption from paying them, well, that's a problem too. And here's something else. In several newspaper articles from the past two years, Wayne Chambers bragged of how well his company, High Touch, was performing. So if we take Wayne Chambers at his word, that his company is successful, then why does it need this business welfare? Economic necessity is usually given as the justification for these incentives. That's when companies argue that the proposed investment is not feasible without taxpayer participation and subsidy. But this argument was not advanced in this case. Now, interestingly, at the time of this application, Wayne Chambers was co-chair of Visionary Wichita, which advocates for greater government involvement in just about everything, including the management of the local economy. And one of the benchmarks Visionaring uses is to exceed the highest annual percentage job growth of the U.S., Omaha, Tulsa, Kansas City, and Oklahoma City. And as I've shown you on Wichita Liberty TV, Wichita badly lags the nation and these Visionaring peer cities on this benchmark. Now, Visionaring officials don't want to present these results to government, perhaps on the theory that it's better to ignore problems than to confront them. But now, Wayne Chambers is the chair of the Wichita Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. And under his leadership, the Chamber of Commerce recommends that Wichitans pay higher sales tax to support the Chamber's projects. Yet, Wayne Chambers engineered an exemption from paying sales tax and property tax for the expansion of his company. So, will blatant cronyism like this be the template for future management of economic development in Wichita? Well, let's hope not, as the working people of Wichita can't tolerate much more of our subpar economic growth. But as far as I can tell, we're in for more of the same failed policies, but with greater intensity and at much higher cost. Well, that's Wichita Liberty TV for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Bob Weeks.